I'm Gabriel Amaro. This recording will briefly describe the U.S. Census Bureau's community resilience estimates. I will start off providing a little bit of background on this new Census Bureau data product, and I will finish with a demonstration of our community resilience estimates dashboard. I start off by describing what is resilience. And the reason being is because there are many different definitions of community resilience out there. And the foundation that we use to describe community resilience is it's a measure of the capacity of individuals and households within a community to absorb the external stresses of the impacts of a disaster. Regardless of the definition of community resilience that you use, research shows that resilience can be predicted by individual and household characteristics. There are other measures of resilience, risk, and vulnerability, vulnerability available already to the public that are uh, more, uh, more likely to be developed by the CDC, USC, or NIH. All of these measures use publicly available American Community Survey data. So if there's these other measures of vulnerability and resilience available already, and they're more popular than the community resilience estimates, why did the Census Bureau measure resilience? Well, what we found was because these existing measures use publicly available American Community Survey data, they can sometimes be either deficient in granularity or accuracy. And that's because of the error and the disclosure avoidance and uh, privacy protections that are in publicly available Census Bureau data. And so what ends up happening is these current measures that are already out there, they underperform during tests of internal consistency and construct validity. So we at the Census Bureau, we're stewards of restricted microdata, in particular American Community Survey microdata. And with microdata, you can actually retain the correlation of individual risk. So what that means is if you're familiar with publicly available Census Bureau data, you can look at a census tract or a neighborhood and you can find out if that neighborhood has a high population, a high per, uh, percentage of the population that is over the age of 65. Or perhaps you're interested in knowing uh, the percentage of the population that does not have a high school diploma. Or perhaps you're interested in knowing the percentage of the population that is living in poverty. So you can find out these different layers of information using publicly available data. But with restricted microdata, we can go down to the individual level, and I can retain, we can retain the correlation of individual risk. And so we can identify a person who perhaps does not have a high school diploma, who perhaps is also living in poverty, and this person may also be disabled. They perhaps are living with heart disease, respiratory disease, et cetera, et cetera. And so we can retain that individual risk for each person. And so with restricted microdata, it's ideal for identifying the most vulnerable populations when it comes to identifying risk. And in particular, this product that I'm going to present to you today, it was developed with the COVID-19 pandemic in mind. So all of the risks chosen to develop this product are related to COVID-19. So that could be uh, risks that are such as respiratory disease, heart disease, diabetes. It could be persons living in poverty, persons that are living in crowded households or perhaps high density areas. And so what we did with, with restricted microdata is we developed a product where you can look at every single county in the US or you can even go down to the census tract level and you can look at the population that is living with between zero risk factors and up to 11 risk factors. However, the data is released in is, is, re is released categorically. So what you what you're seeing right now is a screenshot of the dashboard that I'm going to uh, give a live demonstration of in just a minute. What you're looking at is the rate of the population that is living with three or more risk factors. So the darker the county, the higher the percentage of the population is that is living with three or more risk factors. So what you have with community resilience estimates is you have an easily understood metric for how at risk every individual and community is in the United States to the impacts of COVID-19. Although the, although the community resilience estimates are a new data product, they're already being used to inform vaccine distribution and resource distribution. So the community resilience estimates 
can easily be used to pinpoint areas that are at greatest risk of inequitable outcomes. Because like I mentioned, we go down to the individual level and we can maintain a correlation of individual risk with up to 11 risk factors. So what we recommend when it comes to using community resilience estimates is that when you come to see these other measures of vulnerability and risk and resilience that are already available out there, there's several issues that come with those using those measures, you know, because it comes down to them using publicly available American Community Survey data or decennial data. But oftentimes, the sampling error in the composite measures are unknown. So if you have, if you're looking at a particular census tract or a neighborhood using a different measure of vulnerability or risk, you can find out maybe perhaps there's a thousand people in, in this particular neighborhood that is living in poverty. But what if what you don't know is the error? So the error can be up to 950 people, let's say. So what that means is you can have as little as 50 people living in poverty or as much as 1,950 people living in poverty. But you don't know that information with these other measures that are out there. With the community resilience estimates, you do. What we also recommend is to identify most at-risk populations for equitable distribution of federal funding and state resources Use the community resilience estimates. The CRE is the timeliest because we have access to a census data here. Um, we can start constructing the CRE ahead of any other agency or group. It's the most statistically accurate and granular measure of vulnerability. I'm going to go ahead and begin a live demonstration of our community resilience estimates dashboard. The easiest way to get to our uh, Community Resilience Estimates dashboard is to visit our new COVID-19 hub at the Census Bureau. If you go to covid19.census.gov, you'll be taken to our, our new web page here where you'll, where you'll have access to many different data products that the Census Bureau uh, curates. And if you scroll down, you can click on Community Resilience Estimates. And this will take you to our dashboard. And so what you'll see here, like you saw in the previous slide, is you'll be taken to a county level view of the US. And like I mentioned before, the darker the county, the greater the population rate is of those living with three or more risk factors. I've already selected the state of Texas, but if you're interested in another state, you can select a drop down menu here and select any state you're interested in. And if you're interested in a particular county, in this case, we will take a look at Travis County. The dashboard will update and start loading data at census tract level. And so although we saw in the previous screen that there wasn't a county that had more than 50% of the population living with three or more risk factors, once you get a closer look into counties and you start seeing the variation at the census tract level, you can see that there are some census tracts or neighborhoods that have between 50 and 78% of the population living with three or more risk factors. So you have this functionality here to take a look at states, counties. You can zoom in and out of the map using your scroll button here. If you're interested in looking at the population that is living with zero risk factors, you can select different tabs up here one to two risk factors, three or more risk factors. If perhaps you're also not interested in using the tool, but you want to see the data in table format or use your own software to look at the data, you can download the data here in the lower left-hand corner under the download data link. You can also look at the technical document and the file layout. You also have these other tabs here. So the default that you're taken to is the thematic risk map. You can also click on predominant risk map this will take you to a view of the predominant risk factor group in each tract. And so census tracts that are red, that's where the high risk group is most predominant, those living with three or more risk factors. You can also click on this other tab here, COVID-19 impact report. And so the COVID-19 impact planning report has many different key facts about the area that you're looking at or you're interested in 
And all of these facts can relate to COVID-19. So here, for example, we're taking a look at households below poverty level, households with a disability, households where uh, the population um, over the age of 65 is living alone. You have a second page over here where you can look at the population in poverty status, school enrollment, or health insurance by age, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of good information here. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us.